Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. My God, my God, what a presence. What a presence tonight. Oh, we just need to call on that name. We just need to put it all on him. We need to put our faith in him, our trust in him, our hope in him. Place our desires in him. Call on the name of Jesus tonight. Jesus, how about that? Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. God's given me a word for you tonight. I was once a follower. I was once a follower. I got up every day to follow. But one day Jesus changed it all. You might not ex understand that right now, but you're going to understand it here shortly. As you make your way back to your seats, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I rebuke and bind all sickness and disease away from Sister Sheila right now. I speak healing in her body. Amen. I, 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 I speak healing in that body. Body be healed now. Amen. Sickness and disease be removed. Sinuses clear up right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, you either believe in the word or you don't. You believe with me tonight. I said, will you believe with me tonight? What God's got planned is nothing, nothing. Nothing light, it's something spectacular, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We rebuke sickness and disease off the people of God right now in Jesus' name. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. Be removed and enter no longer. Enter not again into that body, into that vessel. We command healing in the name of Jesus. 
not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of Lord Jesus Christ. And all authority is in Him in the name of Jesus Christ. For your glory, let it be done, Lord. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 3. We're going to start with verse number 1. I appreciate your standing. God bless you for honoring God and His Word. You're not standing to honor the man. I'll say it again. You're not, you're not standing to honor the man. You're standing in honor of God and, in, and, and the Word of God. And may you be blessed greatly for doing so. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Some of you all are already looking around saying, Dear God, what are we going to do? For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. You notice it did not say disobedient to parents that you're still living with. It said disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Hmm. Unholy. My, my, my. Don't worry about the door. That door take care of it. It knows how to shut. We got springs on it. Without natural affection. Truce breakers. Hey, I'm not going to talk about you. I'm not going to do you wrong anymore. I'm just going to wait till you leave. And I get somebody else close to me to break that truce. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Traitors, yeah. heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. Right. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. For such, turn away. Yes, sir. Amen. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captivity silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lust, mm -hmm. ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. My, my. Let me say it again. Ever learning. They're, they're learning. They're educated. They're intelligent by worldly standards. They are super intelligent. They know things. Mm. But God says despite all their knowledge, mm. they will never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. God help us not to be those people tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor. We give you the thanksgiving. We give you... Lord, every thought, every desire, every hope, and every portion of us tonight, we place it in your hands firmly, Lord. We ask God, take of us what you have, what you need, what you will. Our desires that you'll take all of us tonight. And God, that you would do in us a great thing, a great work, create in us. Lord, a clean heart and a right spirit, a right mind, a right attitude. Lord, a right action and reaction. Create in us vessels of purity, of holiness, and of righteousness. Help us to stand and walk and talk and build and firm and always bow down on our knees and lay prostrate before your throne. That no matter what you are doing with us and in us and through us, we would walk with humility in subjection and faithfulness and dedication to you. And we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And everyone said tonight, Amen and Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I was once a follower. Maybe you don't understand that term tonight, but I understand it very well. There was a time when I only followed after man. I followed what man said, what man told me, what man, what man desired of me. Now, I, I need to be careful because I need you to understand where I'm coming from and not get caught up in this new thing that seems to be happening across the body of Christ. And what that new thing is, is there's a whole lot 
of manipulators, liars, deceivers and, and that are coming out saying you don't need a man of God in your life. All you need is just you and Jesus because the Bible says there's only one mediator between uh, God and man and that's the, the man Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's talking about the mediator that can take away your sins, that can wash you clean, whose blood still flows from Calvary's hill and purges all manner of sin and creates in you a new vessel. That does not mean you don't have leadership that we are still supposed to be under subjection to. But today, in our day, in our age, there are people out there who will be self-promoting, self self-blessing, uh, self-titling, uh, self-promoting in every capacity, saying, I'm somebody, and this is my title now, and because this is my title, and, and y'all are dumb enough to watch me on Facebook, I'm going to start telling you the wonders of God. And, and, and it, it could be on Facebook, it could be on X, you know, Twitter. Mm -hmm. It can be on any other page, any other forum. It can be on the internet, it can be on pages, it can be on written. I don't care what it is. There are people out there that are promoting themselves. They're not promoting God. They're not promoting their brothers and sisters. They're not promoting uh, edification and blessing. All they're out there promoting is you don't need anybody but you. You don't, know, you, need, you don't need to communicate with anybody but, but Jesus. Well, the problem is those who keep saying they're promoting with Jesus start talking about these angels that visit them. And this beautiful angel of light who's appeared before me. Let me tell you something. The devil can appear as an angel of light. The Bible says that. I, I believe some people are going astray because they're starting to say, you don't even need a pastor. Matter of fact, you need everybody else except the pastor. And they start trying to demean and belittle the man of God. The man of God was brought into your life to edify you, to correct you, to bless you, to encourage you, to help you, to, to teach you in all things. The Bible did not limit the man of God just to Scripture. Did you know that? The man of God was to help you understand that if you are getting into financial deeps that you have no business getting into, the man of God is supposed to warn you, get out of those spiritual deeps. You're becoming a slave to the money instead of a, a servant unto God, a commitment unto God. And, and, and instead of being able to commit to God in all of your ways, now you've got to commit, you've got to miss the house of God because you've got extra bills to pay. You, you, you've got to miss out on the things of God because you, you, you've dialed up some expenses. You, you don't understand. I, and I'm really going to step on some feet tonight. Cable is not a necessity. The internet, in, in most cases, is really not a necessity. Most people, not all, we've been in positions where we weren't, but, but in most people, you can get the internet on your phone. Uh, let me help you something else. Uh, a Hulu is not a necessity. Right. Netflix is not a necessity. Right. That pair of shoes to match your other 80 is probably really not a necessity. Right. That other outfit, despite the fact that you've got 20 in your closet, it most likely it's not a necessity. Yeah, but I wore that this time last year. You Are you kidding me right now? I wore this suit last service. Yeah. And I wore the suit the service before that. Right. And before that. And for the last two months. Oh no, God help us. The preacher wore the same outfit. Right. We need to close the door. She's not holy enough. There are things that the world's telling you you need that you don't have to have. You don't need the latest and greatest cell phone. I know you like it, but it is not a necessity. Right. Right. You don't need to go out and spend, listen to this, another $1,800 on a new cell phone. No, sir. Whenever the one you've got works just fine. Well, I don't know what to do with it. You take your pictures, you hook it up to that little computer you have, and you get the pictures off of it so that you can now take more pictures. Who knew? Yeah. See, you're, you're spending money on things you don't need to go. I'm going to really, really get on your Holy Ghost now, right? 
if you're in debt, an $8 cup of coffee is not something you should be buying. Right. I'll get even worse. You ready for this? A $3 cup of coffee is not something you ought to be buying if you're that far in debt. A $1 cup of coffee, a $0.45 cup of coffee is probably something you ought not to be buying. Well, it's just 45 cents, but 45 cents times seven is what? Times 14 is what? Times 365 is what? Right. Mm -hmm. You see, what I'm, if you're addicted to coffee, you're, you've got an addiction problem, and it's not a Jesus problem. Right. Yeah, that's right. Amen. It, it, same thing goes with soda. Same thing goes with Frappuccino or Pappuccino or whatever Chino you want to call it. If you've got a, a, a problem with that, it's a problem. Right. If you can't pay your bills, it's an even bigger problem because you ought not to owe anybody. I'm not saying don't go do good to people. I'm not saying don't bless people. I'm not saying don't do what you ought to be doing with your money. I'm saying don't waste your money and justify it. And then uh, my, my favorite thing is when people say, well, I, I paid my internet bill and I, and I paid my Hulu and my Netflix and whatever else is out there. I know my, my, my Disney and my, my uh, uh, Premier and all those things. And, and, I, and I've got my, what's that, what's that show? That Showtime. Oh, God help us. I've got my showtime. i got all that stuff. So, so if we really have to get in the nitty gritty, we can all stay home and just hunker down and watch shows. Oof. i got all that paid for, but I, I can't pay my light bill. Can you help? What are you shaking your head for? I'd be like, no, I'm not helping you at all. Yeah. I got the cigarette. He loves his back. You got oh, God. I got my cigarettes. I've got with. I got my vape. Don't you worry, Pastor. I'm set. <laughs> well, right. I got my CBD with my THC in it. <laughs> my my CBD with my THC in it. I'm good, Pastor. Don't you worry. We got. A, I'm, I'm a happy man. Right. No, you're an addicted man. What am I saying? I'm saying we got priorities wrong, and that's what I did for years. I had priorities wrong. I called sin good, and I called good sin. I called good evil, and I called evil good. I, I, I cling to the things of the world. Even whenever I was in church, I didn't know better, but I followed after the men. And I'm not saying the men were bad. But I'm telling you that there were some directions that I needed. And that was, don't follow me, but get deeper in Jesus Christ. Get a hold of Jesus Christ. Get a hold of the throne. Get a hold of the mercy. Get a hold of the grace. Learn who it is you serve and learn why you are serving him. It's all about love. It's not, God, what can you give me today? God, what can you offer me tomorrow? But God, I love you just because of who you are. But I'm going to tell you something, church. If we're not training that to our children, if we're not teaching that to our children, why is it you think they're going to get it when they're an adult? I didn't get it as a child. I became an adult and I became a fool. Right. Yeah. And the reason I say I became a fool is because nobody taught me there's a Jesus that loves you no matter what. There's a Savior that died for you no matter what. There's a Savior that got the keys of death no matter what. There's a Savior that is coming again because He resurrected and He's coming back to get you as long as you are faithful to Him. No matter what. Nobody taught me that. Nobody taught me how to be a good husband. Nobody taught me how to be a good father. Amen. Nobody taught me how to be a good brother, a, 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 a good neighbor. Nobody taught me. No, I wouldn't have God that I had a church. And listen to me, Kevin. You want to know what your ministry is in the church? When's the last time you helped anybody learn to be a good neighbor? When's the last time you, you taught anybody to be a good friend, to be a good brother, to be a good sister, to be a good saint? 
to be a good anything. Uh, you want to know what your ministry is? You should be the epitome of Jesus Christ. When you walk into the room, they should feel a peace that come over them. They should feel a smile come over them. You should be one of them people that says, every time they come, I just feel wonderful. I, they don't have to say anything. They don't have. They just smile. And then they just move. I don't know what it is about them. I know what it is about them. It's called Jesus. It's called the power of the Holy Ghost. It's called the anointing of a mighty God. It's called the authority of the King of Kings. That's what it is. You know what that's all about? That means the fruit of the Spirit is working inside of you. You know, one of them hot-headed, bull-headed people that when something goes wrong, you pop your cork right then and there. Oh, this ain't working. Why is it not working? Why is it? No, 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 no. You're one of them people that, 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 that bad things can happen and negative things can happen. And you can just walk up and call me and say, hey, by the way, this is happening. And this is the situation. But I want you to know we're not worried about it. I've already given it to God. And God's got to take it care of. Amen. Yeah, but, but uh, we should be worried about this and we should be free freaking out over this and, and, and frustrated over this and, and, and asking God why God why no 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 we should put it in God's hand have faith that God knows what he's doing and have faith that God has the situation under control I'm not saying don't make your petition known to God but I'm saying either give it to God or hold on to it but don't act like you gave it to God yeah. and don't God knows what he's doing God knows where he's going. He knows what he has planned for you. He knew you before the world was ever created. He knew you in your mother's womb. I, I, I submit to you. I believe tonight that each and every one of us, when we were born in the mother's womb, when we were, we, we were conceived on that night of conception, God said, I will have that child, and I will let that child be in my image, and I will mature them, and I will bless them, and I will prepare them for my glory. There are people that have never heard this gospel. Amen. There are people that have never heard this gospel. There are people that have never received the fullness of this truth. There are people out there starving to death. They don't even know what they're starving for. They just know there's got to be something more than this. There's got to be something greater than this. There's got to be something mightier than this. There's got to be something purer than this. There's got to be something more perfect than this. And I'm telling you, I know what it is. Tonight, I know that it is Jesus Christ and Him alone. I know that it is our Savior, our King, and our Redeemer. What's that got to do with the scripture you've been reading? Why don't you, why don't you bring us down the road, man? You're talking all this positive stuff, but you started off talking about perilous times. You know what perilous means? It's, it's very easy. Perilous means full of danger. Right. Yeah. It's that simple. The problem is, are you worried about the perilous times or is your mind set on God's time? Are, are, are you so worked out? Oh, wow, there's another earthquake that didn't happen. Oh, there's another volcano that blew up. There's another war. Oh, there's another threat of nuclear this and, 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 and this, that, and there's another tsunami. And there's another plague. And we don't know if there's enough food. And who knows when the next uh, man-made disease is going to come in and begin to wipe out people. Or, or natural diseases going to come in and wipe. What, what, do, what do we do next? Oh, God, hey, I, you know, I, I didn't sleep last night because I stood up worrying about my family. Help me help you. If you're going to worry about your family, I submit to you, don't lay up all night worrying about them. Pray for them and go to sleep already. Because you're either giving it over to Jesus or you're holding on to it for yourself. Jesus knows what he's doing. He's got it under control. Faith, faith is the substance of things. What is it? Hope for and the evidence of things not seen. You either got your hope, your faith in hope, your hope in faith. Right. Yeah. Come on. And you know that whatever it is you haven't been able to see on your own self, 
God already has it done or you are trying to control it and manipulate it and do it all by yourself. And I submit to you, you can't do it without Jesus. I can't do it without Jesus. Nobody can do it without you. Oh, you might make some headway. You might make it a little bit here and a little bit there. You might make it a little bit further and you might feel good about yourself. But imagine how far you could have made it if you would have done it with Jesus. Imagine how great it would have been, how mighty it would have been, how more perfect it would have been if you did it with Jesus. Jesus is the king. He is the royalty. You go to the king and you submit your petition and he says yes. You know why? Because you've got a leg in. You know what that leg is? Jesus, the king, is your father. Your father's not going to turn you away. Your father's not going to shut you down. Your father's not going to say no. He's going to give you wisdom to do it and do it right. He's chose you. He's called you. He's ordained you. He's anointed you. He's appointed you. Now he's trying to teach you so you do it right. Here's the problem. You ready for this? We're going to get into it now. No, I didn't start preaching. Now I'm going to start preaching. All right. Okay. Come on. You've been doing it for years all by yourself. You know how I know? You say you have a prayer life. But if Jesus came down and stood before you tonight and said, what's your prayer life like? What would your answer be? Would Jesus come down and say, hey, I hadn't heard from you in a while. I just wanted to check on. Would Jesus look at you and say, I was looking at your flesh there for a moment and I seen some darkness and I was looking for the light. I was observing your robe and I wondered what happened, what you get on it. I see some black things on there. Where you been? Would Jesus walk up and say, hey, where's your focus been what's your attention been on I submit to you you can you can watch your, you, you can yeah, let's just get down to the nitty gritty some, some of y'all watch TV who knew Woo. everybody shut us off oh baby one of the people watch TV oh God help us we, they're all going to hell God help them if you really believe that once you get on your face before the Lord and pray for us to make it to heaven We don't watch TV. We watch our phones. It's different. Because it, this, this is Facebook. It's not. This is YouTube. It, it's, not, it's not TV. Well, if you wasn't there live, honey, it's the same thing. Well, I was watching a church service, but, but, but TV was the sin. Not what we were watching. TV was the one I dealt I remember hearing it. So if TV was the one-eyed devil, your cell phone's a one-eyed devil, your tablet, I don't care what you change the name of the TV to, it's still a one-eyed devil. And I don't care what you put it on, it's still the one-eyed devil. You know why? Because the, the television used to say, stay tuned for the following program. Please stay tuned for the following program. And then it would come on, and all the way would hit with that music. I remember it was as a boy, that music would come on, da, 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 and they would just, oh, it's so exciting. The show's on, the show, hurry, get the popcorn, come on, get, we're going to watch the show. Yeah. We'd pick out. Starskin's Hutch is on. Magna P.I. Why, why, why do you keep confessing to your sin? Go sit down. Down. Praise Jesus. Pre-Jesus. Next thing he's going to say is Knox Landing. Oh, no. <laughs> uh oh, see, we just get, man, God help us, forgive us, Lord, right now. All those night shows come on. We're going to laugh at the popcorn. We're going to watch the show together. 30 minutes of family time. <laughs> Actually got stretched out to 45 because they were commercials then. Oh, yeah. Family time's over. Go to bed. Go take a bath. Oh, that was nasty. 
And we get on there and we, that, that was what, it was called programming for a reason. It was programming you to have everything else interrupted so that you can watch that. And then that was full of temptations and snares and all kinds of stuff. You see, I, I don't remember exactly how my wife said it, but basically it goes like this. One generation says it's a sin and the next generation says, well, we'll allow it a little bit. And the generation after that says, well, it's not really a sin. My parents did a little bit. My grandma did a little bit. The preacher did a little bit. So when did sin stop being sin? When did evil stop being evil? When would unrighteousness stop being unrighteous? Think about it for a minute. I hope you're still with me. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. You see, there are things in our lives that we're allowing to submit to us and, and, and minister to us. But there was a time when I needed to hear the voice of righteousness, the voice of holiness, the voice of godly fear. And here's what I got. You are a breathing individual. Quick, quick, come here, come here. You, you, you're breathing, right? I hope so. You're walking really well for a dead man. So, so, so he's breathing. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. Do you have any talents for God? Yes. What are they? Uh, I'm breathing. It's not a talent. That's a must. <laughs> what, what talent for God do you have? I can play the trumpet. He can play the trumpet. What else can you do? Uh, I can sing. I guess somewhat. I don't believe that. Okay, what else can you do? He can work, he can minister, he can, he can knock on doors, he can outreach, he can, and here's what happened. Praise God, I don't care if you're spiritually founded, I, 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 I just need to get somebody out there to start working for God, so tag your in. You got the Holy Ghost, right? Yes. You, you, you repented? Yes. You, you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, go completely dunk, boop, and back up, right? All right, see, he's perfect. Now, I need you. Now, we'll, we'll get you founded sometime, somewhere. Hopefully, it'll stick to you sometime. But right now, I just need you to get working for God. So he has no foundation. Well, yeah, he does. He, he's got Acts 2.38. That's not foundation. That's salvation. And that's not permanent salvation. That's the beginning of salvation. Salvation doesn't happen until Jesus Almighty God looks at you and says, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter in. Right. Yes, amen. It doesn't happen until then. It's not going to be until then. You've got to serve God every day. But let me tell you, we have motivated and shook and got a hold of people. Say, oh, you're a living, breathing individual and you can do something. So I'm going to need you to start. And we automatically say, well, you're saved. You're sanctified. You're a good old boy. We're going to get you motivated. The problem is he's not founded in God. Right. right. That's true. Come on. Mm. He's a follower. He's a follower. Now, I'm the minister, so you do what I do. Oh, brother, you got to do a little bit smoother. So, so let's go back forward. Okay, smoother. All right, you're doing good, man. I'm so proud of you. You're doing a great job for the kingdom. He's following mm -hmm. the man. Do you pray two hours a day? Yeah. Boy, he's awful quiet. He was going, uh, I can do this for God and I can do that for God. Do you pray two hours a day? No. Oh, you, you pray three. You pray three. Yeah. <laughs> going right to hell, blind in the house of God. Yeah. <laughs> See, I haven't taught him. I haven't grounded him to get a hold of Jesus. I've taught him to follow me. 
it, and although that's not all a negative thing, because Paul told them, he said, listen, you follow me as I follow Christ. So there's nothing wrong with it. But what Paul did that we have not seen many do today is to get people grounded in Jesus Christ and ground themselves in Jesus and say, no, you follow me. Not because I'm me, but because I'm following the word and the voice of Jesus Christ. Some people say, well, they're our pastor. They automatically are. I know people that pastor for money. Yeah. I'm not against people getting money. Because they have to eat, they have to pay the bill, all that, that's fine. I, I'm not begrudging anybody. Right. But I know some that just became pastors for money. Right. Mm -hmm. For popularity, for position. Yeah. For accolades. I need to teach him, get grounded in Jesus Christ, and, and look at me. And if I am truly grounded in Jesus Christ, now walk where I walk. Not because I'm in the flesh, but because I am listening to the voice of Almighty God. And once he begins to do that, and we, it's not I go ahead, now you follow, boy. Right. Armor bearers did not follow the one that they were the armor bearer for. Did you know that? Well, yeah, they had to because wherever they went, they went. But you didn't listen to the verb, the, the vocabulary of that. Wherever they went, they went. Yeah. Right. They went together. And only in battle. Yeah. Now, now we're going to fight. I don't have to worry. You notice in the arm in the arm of God that, that, that the armor had no back part of it. Because there was supposed to be an armor bearer behind them. That's what you're supposed to be to your brother and to your sister. But if your armor bearer has not been grounded on firm God fearing, God loving, God anointing, God appointed scripture, if it's not in the depths of them, you have got a ridge where they can cower and run. Mm -hmm. See, all they know, come on, armor bearer, come up here, stay with me. Don't you leave me. Don't you do it. Just get back here. If the armor bearer leaves me, and the backside of me is left vulnerable, this is what my mind begins to go on. This also know that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Wait, didn't you just read that? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, my armor bearer is not strong enough. So therefore, I can't fight anymore because I don't have any protection. I've got no one to help protect me. I've got no one to walk with me. I've got no one committed like I'm committed. Nobody faithful like I'm faithful. No, Nobody completely sold out like I'm sold out. You see, when two people are sold out in God, I'll be honest with you, your spouses will do the same thing. When two people are sold out to God and sold out to that relationship that God has joined together, I'm me and he's the armor bearer, or he's him and I'm the armor bearer, whichever one we need at the time, whichever one we need at the time. So, so, uh, there is a, there's a connection. When we see an enemy come, we don't go, you think you should you think you should draw the sword or you want me to? Boy, he's getting close. I don't know. Last time, remember you, you did that double twirl and, and I, you know, just make sure that you're protected and boom. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what happens when you're not faithful and you're not too. Mm -hmm. My armor bearer has to be on the same level as me, not under me. My armor bearer has to walk the same walk I am. 
So in other words, I don't need somebody just to follow me. I need somebody on their knees praying for me. I need somebody fasting for me. I need somebody looking out for me. I need somebody warning me of danger. I need somebody telling me when I'm making a misstep, when I'm not pulling my sword like I ought to pull my sword, when I'm allowing temptations or snares or evils to come into my life, they should be able to say, hey, I'm not only fighting it off, but I'm cautioning you. You know why I'm not just looking for an armor bearer that's a follower? Because I don't want to fight with a follower. I want to fight with somebody who is a brother, who is a fellow warrior. If he can't fight, why is he my armor bearer? If he can't pray, if he can't fast, if he doesn't know how to intercede, if he doesn't know how to stand up and tell me when I'm wrong, he's not an armor bearer. He's just a follower. Right. Who is your armor bearer? Mm -hmm. You sisters, y'all have phenomenal prayer meetings. God has let me know. You have phenomenal Bible studies. But I want to know who you've teamed up with. Some of y'all teamed up with each other, and you're not even in sync. You're just friends. You need an armor bearer that's on the same level or somebody that's higher that can pull you up with. Amen. That's good. Amen. Not just somebody you get along with. Right. I don't need to get along with my, 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 my armor bearer. Right. He and I don't have to see eye to eye on everything. True. He just needs to be able to walk with me and tolerate some things. I need to be able to walk with him and tolerate some things. Because your armor bearer is not going to do everything perfect. Who knew? Right. And the one you're being an armor bearer for, because believe it or not, we're walking together and I keep saying he's my armor bearer. But wait a minute. Who's that make his armor bearer? So if I'm not being a warrior, Who's in danger? Because mm -hmm. an armor bearer that is only a follower will backslide. Oh, come on. Yeah. An armor bearer who's, who, who's only a follower will not walk with Christ. They will somehow allow temptation to come and temptation to stare and they will fall away. So your job is not to carry them all the time. Your job is to fight with them and fight for them. To uplift them, to encourage them, to bless them, to be there for them, to holler, look out, there's danger up ahead. Yeah. Well, that's my pastor's job. That's right. It's my job to be your armor bearer. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you need somebody else. I don't think Brother Walker wants to always be on my level. I'm not saying that arrogant or proud. I just don't think he wants to fight some of the fight I have to fight. So I have to find brothers and sisters that are like-minded, five-fold ministry kind of people. That I can go to and link with and say, hey, I, I, I need to walk with you and I want to I want you to walk with me and I'm going to be your armor bearer and I, 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 and I want you to be my arm. We're going to do this together. We're going to fight this together. We're going to we're going to restore one another. We're going to uplift. And if you need carried, I'll carry you. I'll help you along the way. And when I need it, I need you to carry me. We'll do it together. Because there are going to be times when I get wounded in the battle. Or I get born in the battle. And I get weary in the battle. But I need somebody to pick me up and say, no, come on. I, I, I've got you. I've got you. We, we're going to do this together. I'm, I want you to be strong. Hang in there. It's okay. we got a step coming up. We're going to do it together. It's a rough one. I know you're in pain. I know you're hurting. I know you're broken. Yes. Right. Sometimes armor bearers know to get you out of the battle. Because you need rest. Mm -hmm. You need restoration. You need healing. Mm -hmm. You need your wounds to be 
made whole. Your armor bearer is not just there. I know I'm right on subject tonight because I have no word. There's not one drop of word armor bearer in my entire message. Your armor bearer is there to help you all the way. They don't leave you. Hey, I'm going to go to battle, man. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go hook up and meet up with somebody else. You take it easy. I hope you do well. That's not an armor bearer. An armor bearer says, when you're down, when you're broken, when, when you're, when you're, I will keep guard around you. I'll protect you. I'll get on my knees before the throne of God. I'll pray out to him on your behalf. I'll show mercy. I'll show love. I'll even help you be restored if need be. But by golly, I'll do it all for the glory of Jesus Christ. I'll not do it to man. I'll not do it in flesh. I'll do it for God's glory. And by me doing it for God's glory, he will be restored. Thank you. If I'm not, if, if I'm just a follower, my eyes will be getting on, on, on around everything around me. Oh, there's wars, there's rumors of war. They're, they're talking about currency crash. They're, they're talking about, about trials coming ahead, the few food shortages they have. They're talking about our water not being as pure as it could. And they're talking about, oh, in Congress, none of them can do anything, and the president allows them. Da -da 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 -da. I'll preach. All that stuff. All that stuff. Everybody's mad. Everybody. That's because you're a follower of a man. You put your faith. Well, oh, can you help us get out of it? No, I ain't got that money. But I know a Savior who can help you get out of the situation. But I also know you're going to have to tighten your belt. Yeah. Where'd that come from? That came back from your coffee addict. That came back from your Hulu. That came back from your Paramount, your Disney Channel, your Internet. I don't care what it is. If you got to cut things, cut them, honey. Why? Because Jesus comes. And I'm not talking about, please excuse this phrase. I'm not talking about being a tightwad. Yeah. Um, I gave you a dollar, and I know you got some change. Yeah, I got 26 cents. We'll give it back because my money. You stingy old goat, here's your money. Do I owe you the rest? Well, no. Why would you say that? Because if you're worried about 26 cents, I suggest you go get the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We got money in the bank, but you're, you're worried about 26 cents. You know what I do with my money? Do you? I don't do nothing. I don't have my money. I make our money. Every dime that I make, though it may not be ever as much as I want it to be, it is not my money. It's our money. What I make is ours. Not mine. Right. And if your mindset is, I make, I get, I do. You're following a man. You got man's concept. Because right. God made some of y'all one. Amen. Right. Yes, amen. Right. And for those that aren't married, by all means, be careful with your money. But don't be greedy with it. Why are you on this man? I don't know, but God's just mom, he's right there. Just. <laughs> don't you get it? Listen to me carefully, because some of y'all have forgotten this. God lives up, God sits down. God puts people up and God puts people down. God puts people in authority and God shuts that authority off. God stands you on your feet and God puts you on the ground. God, it's a God. Quit saying they, 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 they. It's a God thing. 
There's a reason God's going you. Start looking at the reason. God, why are you doing this? Because obviously there's something God is trying to achieve and you have got to listen. Me, 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 me. You better be warming up your voice. <laughs> me, 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 me. Paso la ti, do, 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 dear. Me, 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 me. That's all you better be doing. It is not about you. It is always about the kingdom of God. There is always a purpose. A line and link to the kingdom of God. It is always in tune with the kingdom of God. Perilous times. <gasps> they're, they're talking about us being attacked. They're talking about it. And, 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 then, there's, and, then, and then what are we going to do? We better start stockpiling. Maybe, maybe that'll keep you for a while. I don't know. Personally, I'm waiting for some ravens. But now I'm going to shock you. You ready? Out of all the people, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm here, so listen to me good. Out of all of the people that were starving to death, Jesus sent the man of God to only one lady. You know what that means? A whole lot of other people died. Mm -hmm. wow. They were good people. They may have been godly people. They may have been God-fearing people. But we think because we write the name Christian next to us and we worship and we shout and we praise God and we come to church and we're committed in those capacities, God owes us. Well, God, uh, you'll just send the man of God and everything. You, you, he'll pray and ravens will come and feed my family. How committed are you when you watch your loved ones starve to death? Oh, I know I got deep. See, our commitment is unto the end. Never did Daniel say, well, they're throwing me in the lion's den. I don't believe him no more. At no time did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, well, he's going to throw us in the fire furnace. Might as well deny this guy before we get in. Mm -hmm. yeah. At no time did Paul say, I'm not going to go to Jerusalem. I've been prophesied by all these people. I'm not dying for a lost cause. Mm -hmm. He kept prophesying. People kept prophesying. People kept prophesying. More and more people kept prophesying. More and more people. Pro and then another person said, hey, Paul, you're going to die. You're going to die. Don't go to Jerusalem. Don't go to Paul said, I know. I know I'm going to die. But I'm going to go die for Christ. I'm going to go gain souls before I die. Amen. I'm going to go reach lives before I die. I'm going to get in. I'm going to do everything God Almighty called me to do where he told me to go. And I know, I know the end's coming, but I'm not worried about it. Because before God told you and you prophesied to me, God told me. Amen. Amen. Right. Yes. Amen. And you know why I'm going? Because I'm no longer a follower. I'm a warrior for yes, God. Yes, yes, amen. I'm no longer a follower of man, but I am and I shall be a warrior for Almighty God. I have been endued with power, as it says in, in, in the book of, of Peter, and, and I now have no fear, as it says in Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not. In the book of Joshua, fear not, for I am with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Whithersoever thou goest. I've got some paper in my, in my thing here. I'll find it. 
to breathe it later. On oh, that paper is a prophetic word God gave me for this church in 2018. And it gave a plan for what he had planned. And God said, I'm going to build up some warriors, not some followers. I'm going to build up people that can stand on their own two feet, not come to church every service and have to go to the altar and pray for them. I'm going to stand up some people that are tired of where they are and hungry to move forward. I'm going to raise up some people that are so... Listen, if you're getting your meat from somebody else in the congregation, you're getting the wrong meat. Yeah, we, we need to talk holy scriptures. But if you're going to go get counseling from somebody else, Are they your pastor? Come on. Then why are you calling somebody else pastor? Well, 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 aren't you supposed to? No, no, no. No, you're not. It's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He's given you leadership. Subjection does not mean just serving under. It means more than that. Service is not it. Subjection literally means listen to the voice of, listen to the counsel of, receive the knowledge and the wisdom of. So every time I need something, instead of going to Brother Jerry Walsh, Walter, the, the bishop, instead of going to my pastor, if every time I'm going through something, I say, hey, bud, they got a situation they talk about. I probably should talk to pastor, but, you know, you and I are buds, so let's do this. Why do I have a pastor or a pastor's wife? Right. Well, they're busy. No, you're a hypocrite. Right. They're called to help you. Yes. You just don't want to admit right. Come on. when you have a problem. That's good. You just don't want to lie yourself to be in subjection. Because you'd rather go to a friend or a buddy or a stranger who might do what you want them to do or say than to go to the ones who will tell you exactly how God says to do it. Y'all still with me? Yes. Got quiet. Good. I was going to break out my box of crickets to get noise. Why are we seeking to be endued with power if we don't even believe we got it? Mm. Well, come on. Do you know what the power is? It's the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus inside of you. Some of y'all, not only do you not want to go to the authority that God has put in your life, you don't even want to listen to the Holy Ghost because it'll tell you the facts. You mean I should keep my big mouth shut? Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. You mean I shouldn't go out there and do an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Come on. No, because quite frankly, you come back toothless. Oh my. You got that many battles going on. Come on, Pastor. Thank you. Don't you know you serve the peacemaker? That old song says, I know the peacekeeper. I know him by name. When he says, peace be still. Even the wind and the waves, they obey. Yes, amen. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. amen. But in order to get there, I've got to stop being a follower and I need to learn to be a warrior. But in order to become a warrior, you need to be honest with yourself. He, he, listen, 
I, I'm, I'm so fed out on people saying this is what's wrong with the church and this is what's wrong with the apostolics and this is what's wrong with the pastor. Shut up. You're the problem. Your mouth is the problem. Your mouth should be on its knees praying, not on the internet complaining. Your mouth should be prophesying godliness instead of prophesying destruction. You ought to be submitted and committed and fulfilling what God's called. Not running your face, acting like you're a superhero. Right, yeah, that's right. And then when somebody gets on there, you think you've got superpowers because you have a block button. No, you just want to be superhero with no cave. The only superhero I'm aware of is the original Superman, and that's Jesus Christ. There is no other. Let, let's stop promoting false gods and calling them superheroes, because that's what they are. Oh, unlike Thor, Thor is a false god, which is actually a depiction of a demonic spirit. Yeah. Right. Amen. I go on down the line, but I'll be nice. Start following. Start being a warrior. I once was a follower. And you know what I did? The moment things got hard, the moment things got difficult, the moment hell broke loose to try to fight me, I buckled. Because I did not have a foundation of the gospel. I did not have a teaching of the gospel. I did not have the fear of Almighty God. And I did not understand what the gospel meant to me and what is necessary for my life. And that's the one thing we're missing. We haven't been missing it in this church because God has blessed me with that fear. That one day somebody would wake up and say, I'm Troy Daniel all over again. You know why I teach and preach? Because I need to get you rooted in the foundation of the gospel. When you begin to get rooted in the foundation of the gospel, you get closer to Christ because you realize who he is, what he came for, and what his plan is for your life. You understand that your love for Christ has to be greater than anything and anyone. It has to be greater for, than anything and everyone. Your love for Christ has to be your commitment. It has to be your life's breath. Everybody else has to be seconded. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go a step further. And this is hard. But I know people who have lost their loved one, their spouse. And they live their whole life or their spouse. Yeah. And all that, though that is not a bad thing, because you two are one. There has to be something before them. Amen. And that's Jesus. Amen. That does not mean put your spouse on the back burner. That does not mean uh, disregard your responsibilities, your dedication, your affection, your love, your anything. But that, is, that means there's got to be a communication. Sweetheart, I'm fasting. Uh, and just keep it between us. Or, or even if i got to say, hey, I, I'm not uh, as hungry as I thought I was going to be. Take the hint. Right. Well, I just made this smell. Well, yeah, I, I understand. And, and oh, it smells great. And it, it, it looks wonderful. And, and I really would hope to. Uh, I, I just, I, I, I don't think I can eat right now. I can't believe it. Take your hand, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. <laughs> Why did you just say so? Because the scripture tells me not to. Now I'm going to go fast, but I just gave up all the glory of the fasting. All the blessing of the fasting, because I had to tell you. I'm trying to do that D D D D D D D thing. You want me to read your mind? I'm asking you to read mine, okay? We're... <laughs> it looks wonderful. I just have a reduction in my appetite right now. What does that mean? 
I don't know. I don't know how else to get it. By the way, my wife and I have never had that conversation, so don't think we have. I was just interfering with your marriages. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. I need you to be so grounded in this word. That's why this month, every day, you were supposed to be reading a script, a, a chapter of the book of Luke. Yes. Every day. Well, I have. I just got to catch up on the last 13 days. Huh, really? Go get them. Appreciate your faithfulness. Is that so hard to commit? Was that so hard to give that time for Christ? On the 24th, you will have read all 24 chapters of the book of Luke, and you will have read the entire life of Christ. Right. Amen. Well, Pastor Weiss is so important. I've got my own prayer life. i got my own sense. Because when the Lord tells me to draw you to something so that you get closer to Him, you better believe I'm going to be the warrior and not the follower. Amen. Let's all stand. What is it God is telling you to give up? What has become a snare to you? What is interfering with your walk with God Almighty? What is interfering with your spiritual listening? You know, I, I, I realized this a long time ago, but I didn't know how anybody else really thought upon it until I heard a Brother Robin Johnson the other day, and he said these words, and it makes so much sense. He said, I have found out in my life that when somebody spends one hour watching TV or two hours watching television in that capacity, that spiritually they become drained. And they, are, they, they don't allow themselves, they, they begin to wither spiritually. Because what you pay attention to and what you, you know, Brother Stone King says, where, whatever, wherever you're looking, that's where you're going. So what happens is, how can you think on spiritual things if you're constantly absorbing worldly things? <laughs> There's hardly any drama out there that does not have uh, foul language, perversion, murder, suicide, death, or something in there. Corruption. Right. Yeah. And that's entertainment. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but I got to do something. There's so much more you can do out there. And, and, and there's so many things. You, you know what? Let, let, let me ask you something. This is something us old people used to do way, way back then. You, you ever heard of this thing? It's called board games. You know, they're not games that are boring. They're just on a board. When's the last time your family did that? Well, we can't play cards or use die sets of the devil. Oh, God help us. We follow after a king and the cards have kings on it. Oh, but it says queen. It also says joker, and that's what you're being right now. Right. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yes. I'm, I'm pleading to use your pastor. And I'm confessing to you that in 2024, God is telling us. He's not asking. I said he's not asking. He's telling us to get so deep and so grounded in the word that you become the warrior that God called you to be. That God chose you to be. Some of you have forgotten even the burden that you used to have for his kingdom. Some have forgotten the original calling and the original goals and the original. Why? Because things haven't happened fast enough for you. They haven't happened fast enough for you because your focus changed. All right. Good. Where you're looking is where you're headed. I know we have to live life. I get it. 
but your focus has to be Jesus and not everything else. Our focus has to be becoming a warrior for the kingdom, not just a follower, not just a participant. God chose you. God called you. I know for a fact from your mother's womb. God called you from your mother's womb to do great and wonderful things. How do I know? It's written. It is written. That's what Jesus told Satan. Satan, it is written. Right. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Almighty God. What are you eating? What are you living by? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. What bread are you eating? He said he's the one that not only can quench your thirst, but he's the one that can fulfill your hunger. Amen. Come home. Get back to the vision. Get back to the calling. Get back to the power and the authority of God. Get into the word and get grounded. Get so grounded and so deep. That people look at you in the church and say, oh, he's a real Jesus freak. Oh, she's one of them Jesus death people. She hears from Jesus. Don't say anything around her. Be careful when you go around her. Oh, I don't like going near them. Why? Because I think they know what I'm thinking. I hope to God they do. I hope to God they have such an anointing on them that they can help you break barriers that you don't want anybody else to know you need broken. But this is not a free-for-all. God's kingdom is 100% in order. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Amen. So don't go freelancing. Don't go giving everybody a bus shape the Lord. When you haven't even talked to your pastor about it. Come on. Brother Stephen, let me tell you what I think. Uh -uh. You know the next words out of your mouth should be, Brother Walker? Have you spoken to pastor about this? Yeah, that's good. Because if you haven't, go away. Right. Oh, there you are trying to make a hierarchy. Trying. Either they're the voice over your souls, yes. or they're not. Come on, that's right. Either they're the instrument that God put in your life to lead you to salvation. To get you in the authority, to make you walk the walk and talk the talk, to give you warnings when you're off course, to, to discipline you when you when you need some correction, or they're not. Which is it? Amen. Oh, I love it when he gives correction, as long as he never does it to me. I love it when he tells me about outreach, as long as he never tells me how to do it. I love it when I have that liberty and, and, and if he ever tries to tell me, he better understand I am who I am because he gave me that time. Bless God, he better stay out of my business. Why do you have a pastor already? Because you already raised yourself above God. There's a vision. There's a vision. The Bible says he gives the man of God vision. Now visions. Are we going to be followers? Or are we going to be warriors? Amen. Now's the time to decide. Amen. If you need to get back 
on the right path to become a warrior, get to the altar. Come to the altar and say, Lord, here I am. Your servant heard your voice tonight. And I will obey. I will come home. I will correct my path. I will fulfill your call. You have not chose me to do it alone. But with you and the leadership and the brothers and sisters you have put in my life, I will fulfill what you have called me to do. In the journey you're on now, I know for a fact you're experiencing weariness. You're frustrated. The devil's trying to frustrate your purpose. Even those in your family who think they're trying to help you, they're fighting against you as hard as any other enemy has. The old song says, come home, come home. Ready? Ye who are weary, come home. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for sinners, come home. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for sinners, come home. Pastor, I'm not a sinner. If you got on the path to become a follower, it's sin. It's sin. As Brother Walker comes, this altar is open. I pray. I pray, dear God, you get a hold of the throne and say I'm going to be a warrior I choose to be a warrior I, I choose to be what you called and chose me to be Lord I'm committed to you I refuse to hold anything back I give my all Lord I give my all Shut up, shut up, shut up.